Welcome to the Nature Photo Guys podcast, where we talk about nature photography from gear to our philosophies and everything in between. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back and relax. You're listening to Joe DeJardin and Chris Gibbs, the Nature Photo Guys. Hey guys. Today we're going to talk about uh, cold weather shooting. Uh, we're going to go over some of the, uh, the clothing we wear, uh, some of the gear we have and, and how we use it. So um, I think we're going to start with some tips on gear and uh, what to carry. So one of the first tips I'd like to bring up is uh, batteries and keeping them warm. Um, the, I guess the, the easiest thing to do is uh, actually keep them inside your person. So, you know, whether it's inside your hoodie, inside your jacket, keeping them close to your body is critical to, um, you know, shooting all day long. The other thing too is having multiple batteries. I usually have about four or six batteries with me and they're all tucked inside. And you'd be amazed that, um, you know, how fast these batteries will recharge. Um, once you know they, they've gone dead so uh, you know I take them um, I have all the worms on here I have all the, the dead ones here and it's amazing after you go through um, the good ones that the uh, the ones that are uh, warmed up again actually have you know 50 60 sometimes 70 percent uh, worth of uh, uh, power left so you can continue shooting so um, but I guess the biggest thing to take away from this is to actually keep them warm and to bring multiple batteries so something else that I carry in the bag all the time is, um, you know, uh, it's a blower, okay? So what this does is it, it blows, uh, you know, dust and, and dirt uh, off your, um, your sensor uh, when you're actually changing lenses. But, you know, on those days when it's actually snowing out and everything, um, it's, it's great to have so you can clean off the front element. Uh, the other thing I do carry too, uh, when things get a little um, stormy, I guess, um, is carry a, a, a brush. So a lot of times what I can do is just brush off a lot of the big snow. I can actually blow off some of the uh, other snow. And I also always carry, should have taken this out, um, is a lens cloth too. So then I can actually polish up uh, the lens when I'm finished. Something else you may not think about while you're uh, shooting in the wintertime is uh, protecting the camera too. And um, you know, there's a few items out there on the market that you can use. Uh, something even as simple as um, this, this cover made by uh, Optech. And basically what you do is, you, you know, you put your camera inside. You can tighten down the drawstring, right? And then your camera's protected from the elements. Um, if you want to get something a little uh, fancier, something a little, uh, say, more, um, more protective, um, I have this uh, Think Tank uh, Hydrophobia 300 to 600. And I use this on my larger telephotos. It's a really, really cool system here. And what it does is allows you to put your hands inside so you can actually control the camera and it actually extends out to, the, uh, uh, to your lens hood. And then it also has a, um, a clear back so you can actually see the controls, see the, the LCD to see where your settings are at and that sort of thing. Another thing you gotta remember when you're shooting um, outdoors in the winter is always have your coffee. So something else you might not consider um, as part of, um, you know, preparing for cold weather shooting is actually putting some sort of a protective cover um, on your tripod legs because, you know, whether it's steel or carbon fiber, they are going to get cold. So what I actually have here are the, these covers I actually got at uh, Bass Pro and they're actually covers for the uh, armrest on tree stands and stuff. Uh, they were discounted. I picked up a bunch of them and um, yeah, I'll use them on multiple tripods, but that cold will resonate right through your gloves if you don't have anything to protect the uh, uh, tripod legs. Something else I have in my bag and I carry it all year is a, um, a folding, I guess, bum warmer, something to kneel on, that sort of thing. I picked this up at Mountain Equipment Co-op. It folds up quite nicely, fits in the side of my bag. And uh, yeah, you know, when you're sitting there or kneeling down, working the camera, um, it's nice to have that insulation between uh, your bum and your knees and the uh, frozen ground. So while you have to protect your gear in cold weather, you also want to protect yourself. Uh, what I use is uh, motion heat uh, heated apparel. So these are glove liners. There's a pocket in the glove that you can put a battery in it and it's got three temperatures. 
If you don't want to have the battery in the glove, it actually works off a cord system that connects to a vest that you can get. You can put the batteries in the vest, power the glove still by the batteries that are in the vest, and the vest heats up as well. So there's three temperatures for the vest, and you can turn it up to your liking. I find that uh, it gets hot fairly fast, so you can power it down or just power it off. And uh, later on, the batteries are last so long that you can turn it on and off to your liking throughout the day. The cord is quite long. You can actually see the cord attaches. I have it running up my sleeve to the vest. But if you didn't want to use the vest or if you didn't have the vest, you can actually just plug a battery to the other end of it and then run the glove off that way. Because the battery gets pretty bulky in here and it, and it pulls against your wrist. So having that out of the way just gives you a little more mobility in the gloves themselves. So these are a good option to keep your hands and body warm. Thanks, Chris, for uh, talking about the uh, heated apparel. I actually use the, uh, the stuff myself. And like he said, I found that uh, I can get awfully warm, awfully quick, and I will turn it off, uh, continue doing what I'm doing. And, you know, it's those times when you're actually sitting there, let's say, waiting for a sunrise or, um, you know, waiting uh, in a blind or, you know, just sitting there having a coffee, you know, that's when you can turn things up because usually, you know, you're pretty sweaty and that sort of thing. And that's when you, you get that chill, right? So uh, thanks, Chris. That was a, a good little um, talk about the uh, heated apparel. So we're not going to talk about brands, uh, you know, standard clothing. We're going to talk about some accessories that we wear while we're out in the field. Um, there's just so many brands out there, so much good clothing. Um, you know, we, we do layer, you know, we have our, our base layer, our mid layer, and then, you know, our top layer, whether it's ski pants, a nice warm jacket, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, you know, there's a few other things that we like to wear while we're out there. Uh, for one, it's a, a nice warm hat. Um, you know, normally you see us guys in, in ball caps, but, um, you know, I've worn this hat when it's, you know, in the minus 20s, 30s. I actually wore it up in Churchill uh, when I was photographing uh, polar bears. Um, you know, and, and that's the critical thing is uh, the headgear. Uh, they say you lose about 80% of your heat, I believe, um, through the top of your head. And I, for one, don't have too much hair left. So a good, solid, warm hat is critical. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is keeping your hands warm. Um, I start usually with uh, a nice thin pair of um, like microfiber type uh, gloves. It really helps with, um, you know, the, I mean, the dexterity is still there. I, I could still feel the buttons, um, you know, feel the shutter, that kind of thing. Uh, but it just kind of helps keep, you know, that, that cool breeze off uh, bare skin. The next thing I'd use is I'd have something like a, a pair of uh, mitts that I would actually attach, you know, to my, my arm. I mean, it's got these, um, a tie down and, I'll, you know, I'll actually wrap them around. And man, do mitts actually keep you warm. Now, uh, the other thing I have inside my mitts are these, these hot pockets. And they are, these ones are called um, little hotties. Um, they come in a, a pack of two. Um, I've also got the kind that actually um, you can put um, into your, uh, your boots. And they're on the thinner side and they're actually, um, they've got uh, uh, like a sticky substance to them uh, so they don't actually slip. So, you know, beside your, your hands, um, I've also got them for your boots. Another thing I want to talk about is this fanny pack type um, hand warmer. Um, it's got two openings so you can actually put your hands inside. Um, it attaches around your waist. And again, this is where I'd put some of those hand warmers in there. And then when I'm ready to shoot, you know, easy in and out, I still have the dexterity of the thin gloves. Um, and this one here has, you know, a little accessory pocket for whatever you need. The other thing, your face. Um, you know, I've got a full size balaclava that actually goes over top the head, comes down in front of the face, and then it's got these tie downs to actually cinch it, cinch it up so uh, it protects the front of your face. And if it's not too bad out, you know, I've got this other style here that actually covers just the bottom portion of your face. It's got a hole for your nose so, you know, you're not uh, creating all that condensation by breathing. And uh, yeah, there you go. Covers the bottom part of your face. Now, if you don't want to go crazy and get an awesome hat like this, you know, just a traditional toque is uh, good to go. Now, I just want to talk about 
a few other accessories to make you a little more comfortable. Um, you know, when you're out there shooting, uh, say, you know, sunrise, sunset, uh, landscape photography, and you're actually getting low to the ground, um, if you don't have something like we showed you earlier um, that I'm actually sitting on, um, knee pads. Um, I'm kind of known for uh, wearing knee pads all year round, but to have something like this uh, to get down on the ground and to be comfortable all day, um, I just find these uh, absolutely priceless. Now you may notice a few other things that I'm wearing here. Um, these, th these are called gaiters, okay? And what gaiters do is actually, they, um, it's a, a transition, it protects the transition point from your pants to your boots and when you're actually in deep snow it prevents the snow from actually coming in up under your pants getting your base layer wet and what happens is the the wetness actually the water actually soaks down into your socks so it'll actually wick its way down your socks and into your boots uh, creating cold feet so um, I find gaiters to be absolutely critical um, when you're shooting in the uh, winter conditions and the last thing I want to talk about are these um, micro spikes. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter um, what time of the year come winter time. Um, if the snow isn't all that deep and you don't need snowshoes, um, I've got these on all the time. I mean, Chris and I talked about it. You know, he's been using these uh, for the first time this year. And um, just that comfort level, that... Um, that confidence you have on the trail, especially, you know, from a previous day of, um, you know, warm weather to the next day when it's actually cooled off quite a bit and you got some slippery conditions. Uh, I mean, these, these make all the difference in the world. So what happens when you get home? Um, how do you prevent, um, you know, condensation and everything from building up inside uh, your camera gear? Well, the first thing I would suggest is first taking out your batteries and taking out your memory cards while you're in the field. And then what I, I normally do is actually I keep my camera bag closed. I keep it zipped up for at least 24 hours while I bring it from outside to inside. Now, the other suggestion and what I know a lot of people do is actually put their camera bag inside of a garbage bag and seal that up. And what that does is it just prevents the hot air from uh, combining itself with the cold um, uh, gear and creating condensation. And you can even go as far as putting uh, each individual piece, like a camera body, uh, lenses inside of a Ziploc bag. Um, that's also a great idea. But just keep that in mind, guys. I mean, when we were up in uh, Churchill, what we actually did was at the end of the day, where we were staying, we actually kept our gear inside the porch. So it allowed our gear to stay acclimated the entire week we were up there. So we didn't have to worry about, you know, the process of going in and out of, um, you know, cold to hot, that kind of thing. All we did was bring in our batteries and our uh, memory cards. The other thing I want to bring up is when you're shooting from your vehicle. Now, um, when I'm in my vehicle shooting in the winter, I'm always, um, my gear is always on and I never turn the heat on, especially at my feet. And the reason being is this, uh, normally I'll have my gear pointed down onto the floor, uh, especially some of the larger telephotos and stuff I have. And what happens is, if you keep the, um, the temperature inside the cab uh, too warm, then what's happening is the front element of your lens is expanding. And then when you go to take that camera outdoors, whether you're shooting out the window or you, you, know, you quickly stop, open the door, and you're shooting for a few minutes, or even if you stop, grab the camera gear, go out and start hiking, or you, know, you see an animal off in the distance, well, the camera needs time to acclimate. So um, what happens is as the lens is going, um, as the lens is contracting to the cold, um, you're going to get soft images um, and you're going to wonder what's going on, you know, and that's the reason why you have to keep that camera at a cool temperature the entire time you're out so you don't have that, uh, that problem. So one last tip guys I'd like to bring up is actually camera setting and that's exposure compensation. So how the camera reads uh, a scene is it's trying to uh, create um, an 18% gray tonality to the image. And what I mean by that is it's not trying to create everything 
gray. Um, it's the tonality of it. So back in the film days, you know, we'd have to actually use a light meter at times uh, and that sort of thing to, to get a nice, um, nice exposure, especially in bright conditions. Um, we'd actually take a meter reading off of a gray card you know, that kind of thing. So um, in order to combat that, um, what we use is exposure compensation. So what that's actually doing is fooling the camera. Well, it's not actually fooling the camera. What's happening is the camera's doing its job. It's creating an image, which is 18% gray uh, tonality. So what we have to do is, because we don't want the snow to look all gray and dingy, uh, we need to use exposure compensation. And what exposure compensation does is overrides the baseline exposure that the camera is using. So normally, uh, depending on how much snow you have in the scene, right? That that's one factor. Um, you know, if you're photographing, let's say, a moose, and the moose encompasses the majority of the scene, um, then of course you wouldn't be using it. But you know, doing a landscape image, let's say, um, where uh, the entire scene is snow. Um, this is where we'd actually start adjusting the exposure. Uh, we'd actually use, uh, you know, maybe plus one, plus one and a half, plus two on the exposure compensation. And what that does is, again, it overrides uh, what the camera's saying and it brings the snow back to white and, and not gray. So, you know, something to play with, uh, guys, you know, um, obviously the, the beauty with digital cameras is you can actually see what's, what's going on. Um, the best way, though, to determine whether you've got a bang on exposure is using the histogram, making sure it isn't right up to the right um, and all the highlights are blown. So keep that in mind. If you have any questions about that, guys, uh, drop us a line via email or, or drop us a comment. Uh, we'd be happy to answer that. So as you can see, there's lots of options for cold weather shooting. Um, these are options that we use. If you have any ideas or any suggestions, drop us a comment. We'd love to hear what you guys use. And hey, we might use some in uh, future videos. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us on the Nature Photo Guys podcast. If you have any questions, contact us at info at thenaturephotoguys.ca or message us on Facebook and Instagram at the Nature Photo Guys podcast. Visit YouTube and subscribe to our channel to watch all our latest videos. Or follow and listen to our latest podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on our website at thenaturephotoguys.ca. We'll catch you next time on the Nature Photo Guys podcast.